Welcome to Three Cups of Fun. My name is Zach Bean and I'll be your host. In this episode, we'll learn how to make bagels from scratch in the perfect fruit smoothie. And now I'd like to introduce our other two cups of fun. To the right is my sister and sous chef, Ron Cabane, and next to her is my mom and chef, Nancy Bain. Thank you, Zach. I'm so excited to share my new bagel recipe. It's really easy and so much fun to make at home. I'm going to demonstrate how to make these delicious bagels, and we'll take you for a behind-the-scenes look at Izzy's Brooklyn Bagels here in Palo Alto, California, where they make about 3,000 bagels per day. Wow, that's a lot of bagels. I know, right? Before we get started, I just want you to know that we all washed our hands. Okay, so we're going to start making the bagel dough here. Uh, first, we need three and a half cups of bread flour. I'm just going to measure this out. I like to use the back of a knife and just get a nice even cup here. Mm. Just one cup. How many cups do you need? Three and a half. Oh, almost three cups. <laughs> Uh -huh. I know, right? That would have been funny. We've just got this extra half. Maybe that's in honor of our dog, Bo, and our guinea pig popcorn. Those are the other half of one. Okay, so we got three cups, and I, I just need another half here. There we go. This is so easy. Can make this at home. Have bagels for breakfast every day. Yeah. Okay, and then we just need a teaspoon of salt. I usually do this uh, over the sink, but <laughs> this will work. Yeah, it's about a teaspoon. And one teaspoon of malt powder. Now the malt powder, it interacts with the yeast, and you just get a better rise out of the dough. It's one of those baker's secrets, so letting you in on a little secret here. And I'm going to use the knife again for that. Nice and even. There we go. Just need one teaspoon of malt powder. We need one tablespoon of sugar. Only my tablespoon doesn't fit in my little sugar bowl, so I'm going to use two half tablespoons. This one is purple. I know it's purple. So pretty. Favorite color. Okay. And of course, we cannot forget the rapid rise yeast. Now, rapid rise is a shortcut because you don't have to um, let it soak in the warm water. And so you skip a step, whereas the dry yeast, dry active yeast, it takes a little bit longer because you have to activate the yeast. So this we get to just dump in here with our dry ingredients, That's which cool. is about, yeah. it's one package, which is two and one quarter teaspoons. So just one package of the yeast. I'm sure that's all in there. Okay. So we're just going to give this a quick little stir with all the dry ingredients. And then I have one and one quarter cups of warm water standing by. And you just go ahead and add that in using the dough hook. And you'll see it'll just all come together into a ball. I'm going to crank this up a little bit. <laughs> Get a little shaky here. I always put my hands over. You don't want flour all over your kitchen. Makes kind of a mess. I'm going to turn it down just a tad here. Okay. So if one and one quarter uh, teaspoons doesn't make it form into a ball right away, that means you just need a tiny bit more. So we're gonna just lock that into place so it doesn't lift up. And just maybe add a little bit more water as it's mixing until it forms into a ball. There we go. Now you see how it's forming into a nice ball? You want this to knead for seven minutes. So go ahead and let that knead for seven minutes. Okay. And so then uh, we are going to, after that's been kneading for seven minutes, we're going to um, 
let it rise for one hour. I'm just uh, getting all the dough off the hook. <laughs> so you just want to cover this bowl with a towel. Okay, like this. And after one hour, you'll see that it has risen. Pretty amazing, oh, right? Beautiful. Yeah, totally. Wow. How does it get? It's the yeast interacting with the malt powder. Oh my wow. god, that, that's that's really cool. I, I'm not really sure to be confused or amazed or both or what. <laughs> what? Okay, we're gonna. I thought we're we're not. Okay, so then we punch down the dough. Oh so yeah, punch. you guys can help me. Oh, cool. Go ahead. Get your, we all wash our hands, so yeah. it's okay. Gonna punch that down. Okay, and then. I have a handy dandy bowl awesome. scraper <laughs> and that just helps, as you can see, it just takes the dough very nicely out of the bowl. We don't need that anymore. Okay. And then you can, uh, you don't even need flour. It's a really easy dough to work with. You can just work with it on the board. Okay. And we're just going to cut this into about eight pieces. Gotcha. Um, what do you want to try? Putting it into a piece. Okay. You want to cut this piece in half? Yes. Just chop it in half. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Peel All that right. off. So we're going to get eight nice pieces here. Excuse me, babe. And we're going to form these pieces into balls. You guys can help me roll these into balls? Mm -hmm. Thank you. OK. It's so fun to play with. Yeah, it yeah, is fun, huh? stretchy. So it's a super fun recipe. It's got like a, okay. like a like. drum sound. <laughs> and then we're going to cover these with a towel. And they're going to rise again for another 10 minutes. Let's uh, line them up like that. Okay, right here. Zach, right here, buddy. Let's try to make them as make them a prettier circle. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty oval. Okay, there we, there go. we go. Okay. Okay, and then uh, you cover them again and just let them rise for ten minutes. You can also clean your board with a scraper. It's very handy. There mm. we go. Don't Actually, cut yourself. <laughs> okay. And now we're going to watch the video. We're here at Izzy's Brooklyn Bagels, and we're going to take you behind the scenes to show you how bagels are made. So we got to go behind the scenes at Izzy's Brooklyn Bagels here in Palo Alto, California. They do most of their production in East Palo Alto where they make the dough and cut it for the machine to roll it into bagels. So cool that they let us try it. Yes, we washed our hands first. Okay, so maybe I'm dating myself here, but it reminded me of that I Love Lucy episode when the chocolates were coming down the conveyor belt and they couldn't box them up fast enough. This guy was barely able to keep up, putting the bagels onto sheet pans coated with semolina. They put the trays on the rack and when the rack is full, the whole thing is wheeled into the freezer. These guys crank out, on average, 3,000 bagels per day. 
A good chunk of their business is catering orders. This morning, they had a large order for San Francisco. Needless to say, you can only imagine the type of customers they have being here in the heart of Silicon Valley, surrounded by high-tech companies, just so. Then they drive these bagels over to the Palo Alto location on California Avenue where they boil the bagels, sprinkle them with a variety of seeds, and finally bake them. It smelled so good in there. I was surprised to find out they can cook as fast as seven minutes, record baking time. Pretty cool oven. They just wheel the whole rack in there, hook it up so it turns to cook those delicious bagels evenly. Don't let the name fool you. They don't just make bagels. They also make challah bread. Check out Veronica with her braiding skills. You go, girl. Okay, so like this. Okay. Oh, that. more the same. Okay, that makes it easier. <laughs> close, close, close. Yeah! <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Same as the other one. <laughs> Then they Whoa, made some chocolate chip bagels. Drool. Oh my, gosh. oh my god, you should have seen that big box of chocolate chips. Are those chips. mini yeah. chocolate chips? That's awesome. Where do you get that? Huh? Ah. Yeah, just have a couple scoops to take home. I love mini chocolate chips. If you go there, you should also try their raspberry arugula. Yum! And don't forget the cream cheese for your bagel. I had the green olive and garlic cream cheese. Super yum. Then they made some cookies. A surprising variety for a little bagel shop. I thank the manager for letting us get a behind the scenes look and got some bagels to go. So now that they've proofed for about 10 minutes, we're going to go ahead and do the fun part, which is making the bagel shapes. Yeah. So here we go. Just grab one. And just uh, take your thumbs and make a little hole okay. in each one. There we go. Just use two thumbs and you just put a little hole in them. 
not too big. And then we're going to boil these. And once they're boiled, we're, we can put the seeds and salt and stuff like that, Any whatever toppings you like. So we actually have sesame seeds, poppy seeds, and some kosher salt that we're going to use. Yum. Especially right? the salt. Like the salt and bagels are okay. so good. Yeah. So they like look good, right guys? Yeah. Yeah. And our water <laughs> is not quite ready, but let's see. Hopefully it's warm enough to do the trick. Okay, so if Veronica, if you want to carry two bagels to the water here, we're just going to do four at a time. Thank you, baby. Go ahead. Can you put them in? Nice and gentle so you don't burn yourself. That a girl. Okay, so you want to boil these on each side for about 30 seconds. It only takes a minute. So uh, 30 seconds on each side and just uh, let them boil. And then we're going to flip them over. Smell good. Mm -hmm. okay. And this scoop is called a spider. I don't know why. <laughs> I thought you had spiders. It, it's not a name <laughs> I would call a scoop since I don't like spiders. But. Ah, and you do like cooking, so. <laughs> okay, so you let them cook on each side, and then we just have a tray ready with some parchment paper that we're going to put our bagels onto. Yep. And they look a little funky, but when they bake, they puff up and they are way more perfect looking than these artisan shaped bagels. Funky bagels. Okay. So if you can hand me the next batch and we'll boil those. Okay. It's a little tricky. There we go. Just nice and gentle. Yep. Okay. And I would just do four at a time because uh, you don't want to crowd your pan too much. And it's a lot easier to flip them if there's only like four at a time, if you're using like a frying pan. So totally doable at home. Uh, as you saw, Izzy's Bagels has a much bigger thing to boil their bagels in. They can do it in vast quantities. And their spider scoop is a lot bigger than this. <laughs> okay. There we go. So now that they're ready, we just put them on the baking sheet and we'll put them in a preheated 450 degree oven. You want to bake them for about 20 minutes. Oh, that is not good. That's for a home oven, not the industrial seven minute oven. <laughs> it's a lot faster. Okay. So we're going to put some toppings on these. Do you guys want to help me put some toppings on these? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So. Let's do uh, poppy seeds for four of them, the top four. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to turn off our water here. So these four poppy seeds. Okay, here's the hole. And then okay. uh, these one here. Uh, yeah, the two on the bottom oh, are on sesame. The bottom. Okay. And I'll do the kosher salt. So we're just doing three toppings today poppy seeds, kosher salt, and sesame seeds. Ooh, yummy. Okay. Good job, baby. A little more. Be a little more vigorous here. Is it not coming up? Oh, is it so much? No. Yeah, that's good, Zach. Good okay. job. Cool. Okay. Go back in my chair. One more, baby. Okay, those look good. All right, so Zach, I need you to take uh, the tray of bagels and go put them downstairs in the oven. Okay. Here we go, baby. That's good. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Okay. There we go. Can you put those down, downstairs in the oven? Okay, and then uh, those are baking for 20 minutes. 20 minutes later. 20 minutes later. Thank you, Zach. Oh, they look amazing. Oh, they look so wow. good, don't they? You can just set them here on the rack. They look perfect. I like how they puffed up a lot. I know, right? Lot, right? They totally did. Okay. And that. so uh, you guys can go ahead and help yourselves to some bagels. Oh, oh, they're I'll hot, so be careful. That one. That you one. want this one? Yeah. Okay. There you go. I'll and uh, just let them cool down for a minute. This one? The yeah. salted one? Okay. You got a knife and some cream cheese there. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the bagel. Yay. Whatever. The bagel dates back to about 400 you know? years ago. 
In 1610, bagels were given as a gift to women in childbirth and as a symbol of continuous life cycle and good luck. It is believed to come from the Jewish population in Poland. In Yiddish, it was known as bagel, spelled B-E-Y-G-E-L. The bagel may have some Germanic roots, however, as in the word bugle. It means a round loaf of bread. Bagels became more mainstream in 1927 when Polish baker Harry Lender came to New Haven, Connecticut and started the first bagel factory just outside New York City. Bagel making was a closely guarded secret until about the 1970s when the International Bagel Bakers Union disbanded. And the rest is history. Now we know the secret, people. Okay, so what do you guys think? Hmm? Can we try the bagels? Yeah. Okay, let's get a bite of these. Mm. Yum, yum. Oh, Here, let me help you, baby. Is it tough to cut? Here we go. Mm. These should slice up nice and easily. Oh, yeah, look at that. That is delicious. That is so okay. good. Okay. Mm. Can I have a mm. bite, too? No. <laughs> Mine, bagel. Yummy, yummy. Are you going to make me one, baby? Yeah, this one's Mine. yours. Oh, thank you so much. I'm just going to take a quick bite, and then we're going to make a smoothie, OK? Mm. We don't want to spend too much time on that. Thank mm. you. Oh, let me just have a bite. Oh, my god, mm. so good. You haven't mm. tried it yet. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mm. Delicious. Mm. So good. Fresh, delicious. Mm. OK. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Two thumbs up. OK. And now, we're going to make a smoothie for you. And I don't really need these. I wear contacts. <laughs> OK, my smoothie recipe is also super easy, OK? We're just doing easy today. So uh, we have a cup of yogurt, or not a, not a, a whole cup, but like a 5.3 5 ounce thing of it. And uh, we just dumped it out into here. So. We're going to mm. do our yogurt. Oh, yeah, that looks so that looks good. good. Doesn't that look good, you guys? OK. Yeah. Thank you. And then, uh, Veronica, can you help me with the strawberries, please? Oh, yeah, of course. We're going to cut up some fresh strawberries. We use about 10 strawberries. There you go, baby. And your knife. OK. Not sure what a knife was. Hey, Veronica, what, what's that over there? Okay, you can use this knife. There you go, baby. Mm. So we're going to cut up about 10 strawberries. We have a cup of blueberries. What strawberry? Watch. No, Just no measure out a cup of frozen blueberries. And the reason why I use frozen blueberries is because then that kind of chills the smoothie. I'm just trying to get the one cup mark here. Okay. Why not the three cup mark? <laughs> three cups of fun. All right, so we got our blueberries in there. Do you have a garbage? Just put it aside. Okay. Okay, and then we need about a cup and a half of orange juice. Just uh, double checking my recipe here. Okay, I'm going to measure out a cup and a half of orange juice. There we go. Oh my god, it looks good already. Okay. And we need one banana. Now, when we're eating bananas, personally I like them a little green. But for a smoothie's sake, we need them a little riper, a little sweeter. So we're going to go with the more spotted riper banana. And since you're busy doing that, I'm going to help out with the banana. So I can do it. <laughs> Zach is busy uh, eating mm. a bagel, I think. Huh? Hmm? Okay. So Love you just want to put it in bite-sized pieces into the blender. And this is such an easy recipe. It's just dump everything in there and blend. So, Veronica, I think we got uh, enough strawberries. Thank you so much. And we're going to dump these in here as you're cutting them up. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to get a nice good scoop of the orange sherbet. Oh, that looks good. Which kind of sweetens it up and may add a little 
texture. Bit of calories, but anyway. If you're not oh. counting calories. I was, I was so delicious, see. oh my God. Te texture for whatever. <laughs> okay, and then to make it a little more healthy, we are actually gonna add a scoop of protein powder. Yay. And where did I put that? Here. Now I actually use uh, the whey protein powder because personally I think it's way better. It dissolves better, it tastes better. This is vanilla flavored. So I'm gonna put a scoop of that. And uh, actually, if you're vegetarian, you probably wanna use soy because whey is a byproduct of cheese. You know, like eating your curds and whey. It's always good to combine your protein with sweets so that you don't get that sugar spike in your blood sugar. And this will actually help prevent type two diabetes according to Kaiser Hospital. That's what they told me. All right. So we got everything? Good yeah. job, baby. Thank you so much. Veronica's my little helper, my sous chef. Okay, so we got all of our ingredients. Mm -hmm. Now we're you ready to in, blend. You put in this. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Thank you, nice catch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are good to blend, and we just need the lid on. That is very important. <laughs> I've watched cooking shows where they forgot to put the lid on. Ha, huh. I remembered. So, and we are not having any power right now but I'm gonna fix that right now. <laughs> Magic. Okay. Okay, thank you, baby. It's that simple. Delicious recipe. If you didn't catch the recipe on the screen, it's gonna be on our Facebook page, which Zach is gonna tell you about. And should we give this a try? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Zach, uh, you know what I forgot is the whipped cream. Can you go get us some whipped cream, buddy? Of course. Thank Here. you. Get the cups. Okay. Oh, my God. That looks so good, right? Super the, healthy. I'll aside from maybe the orange sherbet, which you can omit. There's a lot of ingredients you can swap out for other things if you prefer raspberries or any other fruit. Swap it out. That oh, is so good. You got good. three of them? <laughs> well, we got enough whipped cream anyway, so that's good. Okay. Can you pass me that, please? Okay, so, uh, yeah, sure. Can you put whipped cream on all of ours, please? Sure. I just want to thank our sponsors, the International Culinary Center and Piazza's Fine Foods. This show is made possible because of your generous sponsorship. Thank you, thank you. Also, thanks to our viewers, and we'll see you next time. Are you guys having, how are the smoothies? Are they good? They're delicious. Oh, you should try it. Oh, good. yeah, let me try it. Wait, hook me up. Oh, oh, some oh, cream. Oh, oh, oh. oh, you want to do it? Okay, you can do it. Oh, you know I like whipped cream. Mmm, 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 mmm. That's right. We enjoy sharing our recipes for bagels and smoothies with you. Please like our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash three cups of fun, and feel free to post comments and suggestions. Until next time, I'm your host, Zach Bain, with three cups mm. of fun. Oh, mm. yeah. I'm liking mm. this whipped cream. <laughs> 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 <laughs>